Senegal's president and African Union chairman, Marky Sall, has says, says that when he visits Ukraine, Russia and Ukraine in the coming weeks, he will push both countries to unblock exports of grains and fertilizer to avoid widespread farming. During a conversation with philanthropist Mo Ibrahim at the Ibrahim Governance Forum, Senegal's president says Africa risks disastrous consequences if the situation endures. Joining me now to discuss this is Sanyadi Okoli, Chief Executive Officer at Alpha African Advisory. Good to have you this Friday, madam. Good morning. Good. I'm sure it's been a very busy week for you. Yes, thank you. And do you think President Maxali will be able to convince uh, President uh, Vladimir Putin and Zelensky, on the other hand, uh, to unblock exports of grain and fertilizers, in particular, as Africa looks at an imminent food crisis, as the FDB president puts it? That's a tough question, I it's think, for, for, for everyone. The reality is food security is a huge concern. Globally, yes, but more specifically in Africa. And about half the African Union countries are um, dependent on food imports from Russia and Ukraine. So it's a big issue that affects us. The question is, President Saar's ability to influence them. And I guess that's why you asked the, the question. Yes. He, from what I read, is seeking to appeal to their, their better selves. But let's face it, the war didn't come about based on a heart of compassion. So I really do wonder about how moved, especially President Putin, would be this about is a, the there's issue. There's a high-stake geopolitical Postures and actions already been Absolutely. taken. Lives been lost on both sides. It's a whole revisiting. As uh, Vladimir Putin, he said, this is the way of retaking back the glory of Mother Russia, Soviet Union since 1990, the domination of the West, America and the European Union. So you're looking at the weight of President uh, with, with due respect to, to, to his office and person as the Africa. Maybe you could plead an Africa's case. I think, you know, I try to put myself in his shoes. He's head of the African Union. He could either do nothing or try something which, you know, most people think the odds of him being successful are quite low. But at least, if only to solve his conscience that he tried to do something. It's likely, it's likely, it's, uh, let's let, let just try. Let him, let him try. You never can tell. I, I think, I think that's, that, that's the posture. Uh, uh, Senegal and African Union come in way out of the main warring parties between Eastern Europe, which is Russia on one hand, and the Western world on the other hand, with Africa just sitting somewhere down there. Perhaps this is going to be a neutral person, an organization to wade into the, this East-West uh, problem we're having. Full sufficiency is possible in a global... I do think it's possible in a globalized situation which we have right now, protectionism of produce every grain of wheat, rice, what barley that you have? Hmm. What? I hear you say again. Yes, because, because these are real issues big issues, global issues, with lots of interests, lots of personalities, lots of history, lots of politics. But what I can say is that each country, more, now more so than ever, realizes the risk to themselves if they are highly dependent on foreign imports to feed themselves. This is a humanitarian issue as well. So I expect more and more people domesticating the production of key food items for themselves. So in a way, you think the central bank, for example, here in Nigeria, mainstreaming agri-intervention over the last few years could perhaps be on the right track? Well, certainly, well, certainly we need to feed ourselves. You know, and we're a large population with over 200 million people. So, they, you know, they are, our import demand is huge. We really do have to raise the, the quantity and quality of our agricultural production. Huge imports and a huge n number of mouths to, to feed. So, uh, are you ready to go in a flight taxi? Absolutely. I don't, I don't so you're, you're good to go. Well, well, let's put it this way. It's not going to happen if they don't have all the right... Um, Regulatory the right, approvals. Exactly, approvals. Mm. So as you just read, they've now secured one out of the three approvals they require. You and I sit in planes all the time. You know, however many years ago, when it was not mainstream and people were going by ship from here to, you know... London. The, exactly. Yes. P 
people might have been thinking, oh, who's going to sit in a plane? But now it's just, you know, par for the course. Everybody does it all the time. A flying so, taxi, that's what we're talking about. No, but a, no, not, no, 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 okay. Not, I think not a transatlantic so we, airplane. So reframe it in your mind. <laughs> See it as smaller airplanes no, rather than a flight. Because it's mouth. not a flying car. Well. It is a smaller aircraft fit for purpose that can elevate vertically so you don't need a long runway for it to fly so you can use it in cities we already use helicopters yes well, yes we so do. this is just progress i like it maybe we're going to need it more here uh this i could see this one out landing on a, on a farm for example if you want to inspect uh perhaps aliko dangote wants to inspect his uh, cement factories across the country or Rabiu of Boa, you just go land on this facility and move to the next one. I, to, honestly, I, I see that once it's got all the necessary approvals, et cetera, et cetera, and it can be operated in a cost-efficient manner, I see adoption in a lot of key cities. Is it going to be electric or fuel? Because in, in, the, um, in the um, mid to long term, it's meant to be electric. So right now, oh, okay. what they just got approval from is normal aircrafts because they want to test the back end of their systems and processes. But the objective is for it to be electrical, vertical um, Aircraft. Do you think Nigeria is going to be the first to have a flight taxes? Oh, I'm, I know Nigeria would like to be the first. Will they be the first? As in, in Africa, I yes. presume. In, you in Africa. Yes, in, Af yes. Yes, in Africa. Um, okay. So I'm what sure would happen? They, Lagos, they'd like Abuja. To, no, well, I can, the case is clear for Lagos because traffic, as you know, is, is a huge... Yesterday, it, ra it rained. Yeah. Look at what happened. It's There's all traffic, messy, it's traffic all everywhere. So you, you see the case for it. Will they be first? I'm sure they'd be competing with the likes of Johannesburg and other, maybe some other North, North African I know, but again, countries. talk about regulation here. Because if you have the dozen flying taxis in the area in Lagos, you've got to be very careful about what happens up there. But we have many air, um, airplanes that fly into the country. Yeah, yeah. So we need to raise our game. I think we need to put what is required to make it happen rather than make decisions based on what we do have, which we know is inadequate. Mm. That's my perspective, anyway. Okay. You, 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 you go to go. I'm going to stand out here <laughs> at the stop studios and, and just wave to you and say, well, safe landing at the other side. Let me talk about the experience. Let's talk about the virtual currencies. Do you agree with the, um, the whole idea uh, about uh, the Federal Reserve uh, uh, Chairwoman uh, Baynard about uh, uh, CBDC uh, coexisting with privately uh, based digital assets like stablecoin, do you think there's enough room in the sky okay. for everyone? Let's put it this way. When it comes to digital currency, the world is not going to agree at this time, and key people, key stakeholders are not going to agree. It's a highly contentious issue. But what we do know is that stablecoins exist today, and we know that more governments want to have their own digital currency. So it's not going to be a case that if you know, if and when the U.S. decide to issue their digital currency, that all stable currencies that are already tied to the dollar will be killed. That's not going to happen. Um, so it's just how we move forward. But as you know, most governments are proceeding with great caution because what they all realize is that we don't fully understand this, I don't want to call it beast, this, this new thing, all these digital currencies where the... They're still trying to understand how it all works and the effect it's going to have on various aspects of the economy. And if you, again, stable currency is there because other forms of cryptocurrency like Bitcoin are so volatile that it's, you know, if I'm using it to pay salaries, for example, you know, how is it? It, it? It's just very difficult to use it for day-to-day -day transactions, okay. which is why you need stable currency. Okay, and government currencies, currency? you know, is just another part of the spectrum of cryptocurrencies. Mm. An interesting new world we, we found ourselves uh, right now. Uh, Twitter uh, is getting fined $150 million. Uh, we're not too sure what uh, Elon Musk will finally do with his plan. Is this penalty justifying your view or too harsh? Well, let's step back. Data protection is an issue. The use of individuals' private data, data for 
not what it was meant to be used for is an issue. But then if you look at it from another standpoint, there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? There are all these different apps and platforms that we use that we don't pay for. And we've got to ask ourselves, you know, when these, country, uh, these companies are worth tens of billions of dollars, that's because there's some income that must accrue to them. How is that income generated? I think we all just have to be very pragmatic about, about these things. Interesting. Uh, it's a whole new world we find ourselves, by the way. Yes, and You're sounding like a very reluctant player in this whole new world. I'm, I'm, I'm stepping into the new world, you know. I love the light, but I get to measure it, by the, by the way. Um, I'm going to follow you folks, by the way. I'm, sorry, I'm just behind you. So, yeah, Dio Kodi, Chief Executive Officer at Alpha African Advisory. Thank you so much, madam. Thank May you. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Enjoy your weekend. You too.